You're here. I'm here. We're here. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of DOD 45. I am Ty of Art by Ty, and our guest on the episode today is Factor Chandelier, which is truly a pleasure, and we're all quite lucky because I have it on good authority. The Factor doesn't do many interviews. That's straight info from Chesky. That's good, though, because DOD 45 isn't an interview, it's a discussion. And I can tell you, our conversation with Factor today is such a pleasant and easygoing one, it felt like I was just chilling with a longtime homie. We discuss some cool shit today, like his assessment on how he got his particular sound. We talk about his dog, Pirate, who I draw a picture of during the conversation. I mean, you know, it's drawing over discussion, so of course. We also get into his feelings towards coming out of the lockdowns in Canada and getting back out to touring. And somehow we get into a discussion about all of the stresses and complications that come with crossing the U.S.-Canadian border. Don't remember how we got into that. Factor Chandelier is really responsible for so much amazing music. And if you see any songs with his name attached to it, you can pretty much be guaranteed it's going to be something fantastic. Proof of that is Chesky's Sad Fat Luck album. Everything is a test. Everything falls in line. Like flat ones and electrocardiographs when we die. Everything is a test. I against I against I. In the meantime, use those brains to redefine that life. Everything is a test. Everything falls in line like flat ones on electrocardiographs when we die. Everything is a test. Everything falls in line. Like You've heard enough from me. Let's let our guest get a few words in. <laughs> Before we start, uh, I'd like to just ask how things are going for you, uh, how, how you're feeling. And... Things are good. Um, everything's opening back up right now My in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, where I'm from here in Canada. So, I mean, it's a good feeling. It's a little nerve wracking, but uh, I just took my first show September 10th. So looks like things over there are have been open for a while. But yeah, it's cool. It's cool to be like seeing my friends again. And yeah, stuff. are you going to be a little rusty? I mean, is that 10th is going to be your first show since when? Two years. <laughs> are, uh, you, are you going to have to shake the dust off of the show, huh? <laughs> yeah, big time. So I, I got to I, I know like. Before the pandemic, like the first, like right when it started in April, I was going to do my album release party for First Storm. And then I had the posters up. I had a tour booked after that. And basically the venue just kept like, you know, alluding to the canceling and then it just got canceled. So in that time, I did the album East Lake during the pandemic. So I'm just going to combine those, use the visuals that we've been working on for the other show. And just do like a double album release. So yeah, I mean, hopefully it's cool. We'll see. I, I do got to. Like yeah. I got to get practicing though. No doubt. Is, oh, yeah. is your show here or is it over in Canada? Are you allowed to come it, here? That I don't know. I so Chesky's about to try to come record August 9th here. So we'll see what the border situation is. I think if you have your double vaccination and proof of it and a reason to travel, it's okay. You can. I'll but I know that my reason for travel would be work. So then I would definitely have to get a work visa, which is a pain in the ass to get. Because sometimes you can slide under the radar and it's a lot easier. But um, we'll see. I'm going to approach that. I'm going to take September as the first step and then um, just continue working in the studio and then really gear up for next year, I think. Wow. Yeah, I didn't even think. I mean, even just pre-pandemic even just going crossing over the border was it was always there was something it was always something stressful stressful <laughs> yeah no matter what time of day we would try to, to go at like really late at night to do the crossover and it was still just as <laughs> oh yeah there's all kinds of stuff that's that's that happens on the on the border cross i even had guys they like planted um scissors with thc in their car to train some employees like they used them as uh oh, shit. yeah it was crazy they were like and, and they didn't even know that they were part of this training exercise no oh, God. They, <laughs> did they get charged with anything no no charges because they they were like i think they all smoked at the time but 
the, it was a huge discussion to like have the car completely clean. So there's no way they would have just left scissors. So they, you know, they ended up just being like, okay, go through. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. The whole, the whole thing is just so bizarre. And I've had so many situations where I've just been completely checked my phone checked they show you this paper and they're like we can legally get into your phone either you like let us either you unlock it for us or we'll like hold you until you unlock it so i've had my phone gone through and like taking my bag apart i don't really understand like what they're looking for what they think you have maybe bodies (laughs) yeah i know it's it's so it's so trippy and uh But I will say I have gotten the work visa legit and you just go through in a second. It's awesome. Yeah. So it's whenever you're trying shady stuff, I think like not shady, but like, you know, you're trying to sneak, you have your explanation for going is too long. You know, you, you like get, look a little nervous. So they really try to check what you're doing. Then they're like, oh, you're going to play a show for 150 people. Get out of my face. (laughs) I know. The first time I even went, it was to, um, O- Okanagan is that what that's called oh yeah the Okanagan yeah, but it was for a film festival I had a film what my film was playing at a film festival there and we still got shook down we didn't have any gear or anything and like they were totally shaking us down and we were like we're just going for a film festival <laughs> then they started asking questions acting like they were wanted to know about the film I don't know I, I don't know I don't <laughs> it's too much it's it it's is. it's too much and uh and just with a few bad run-ins and a few things that came up on tour while we were touring in the states like i always just get this huge stress over the border but yeah i don't know i'm gonna look into the visas though again that's for sure because i do want to do a u.s run next year so we'll see what's up well uh yeah that's uh i'm glad that you mentioned that i I like to talk borders (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's crazy like we we did some shows in canada with mike and i and i guess it's two and a half years ago but he had never been into Canada before. And it was like this big thing. We booked the shows. We had no clue if he was going to get over. He had no clue if he was going to get over. He had been denied before and never tried again, I don't think. And uh, and they drove over the border at what's the uh, what's the name? Niagara Falls. And like he just got over fine. And we did like this last minute Canadian tour. But now, you know, Micah can get into Canada. So who yeah. knows? Maybe I'll do a tour with him, too. Yeah, I don't I, Are you guys officially? I mean, but officially Americans aren't able to come over there unless, like you said, possibly if we have the proof of vaccination. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to have. So who knows? I, I don't know when I'm going to feel comfortable traveling. We'll see. It's going to be weird to have Chesky here after two years of like... Will, will he be... Like, is he going to stay with you and everything? Yeah, he'll stay probably right in this room we're talking and he'll probably stay in. <laughs> and this is your... You guys were on pretty hard lockdown this whole time. Yeah, it was wild. And, uh, and you know, we were, we, we were real close contact with people that got COVID and we had to, you know, be in the middle of winter. It was like minus 40 degrees here, snow everywhere. And we couldn't leave our house. We had to like order groceries because we were close contacts. And yeah, it was intense. It was intense in the, in the middle of this thing. You know, here in the States, it's, it's, it, it doesn't exist anymore, apparently, but <laughs> Well, good. I'm glad you're going to be on. You're you're going to be able to get back out. I'm I'm hoping the best for you after a two year yeah. hiatus. <laughs> well, yeah, and I'll do some shows. The thing is, you know, with me being like kind of production and behind the scenes, things have been getting better in the like mixing in the studio. Um, I just have the opportunity to stay home more and still make it happen and be excited about it. So I, you know, I'll probably lean on that a bit too than the extensive touring, but I do want to be able to do shows like release parties and stuff. Absolutely. All right, man. Well, I'm going to set this timer. So uh, I'm going to draw your dog pirate. Yes. pirate. Uh, But speaking of pirates, I do have to ask you, maybe you have the proper insight. Is it pirates of the Caribbean or pirates of the Caribbean? Oh, that would, that's interesting because I don't think I would be, I don't think my answer is going to be official. I think maybe Caribbean. I don't know. I don't know either. Adrian, what do you say? I think it's Caribbean. (laughs) Okay, good. I don't don't know. know. I, I think I say, I think I say Caribbean. Because when you go on a Caribbean Maybe. cruise, are you going on a Caribbean cruise? Yeah. I don't know. I <laughs> always hear it as very Caribbean. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. 
I was wondering, I was just hoping you had the answer to that one. man. <laughs> That's an interesting question. And uh, now it's got me thinking about it. Caribbean, Caribbean. Uh, I've always said Caribbean. I think that's what it is. I think I've always said Caribbean. Shit, I don't know. <laughs> it it does, really doesn't matter. But um, <laughs> so how old is Pirate? Pirate's 14. So he's an old guy. He's uh, he's very loving dog and very high energy border collie. So after like since the pandemic, I, we had friends over to our house, all you know, quite often we invite people over, have a barbecue, hang out, you know whatever but uh then since we started having friends again they've been like oh the old guy's slowing down you know i i didn't notice it as much but a lot of people have been saying it since since they've been seeing it haven't seen him in a year or two you know so yeah they recognize the difference you you being with them every day you don't recognize yeah and he you know he sleeps more he still comes and greets you because he was like uh he would jump up on some people. I mean, he got kicked out of like dog obedience. He was, he's not like a bad mean dog. He's just so high energy. Yeah, border collies are high energy and super smart. Yes, exactly. And you know, the story on how we got pirate was I went on my first tour with a wall and DJ Hoppa. That's where I met him. You had him on the show last week, but uh, my wife now we were together and she, you know, the tour was like two and a half months across all the states. And by the end of the tour, she was like, oh, I found this dog. I think we should get a dog. I was like, oh, well, we'll talk about it when uh, when I get back home from tour. I mean, it's probably a good idea. She's not. Then she's like, yeah, you know, we got a dog now. <laughs> like I took him <laughs> home. He's like ours. So I was tripping out. I never had a dog growing up or anything. And so he's been a great like. Uh, He's been around for for the the majority of any sort of significant uh, musical endeavors. Oh, awesome! What did you guys get him when he was like a puppy? Or yeah, he was kind of the the runt of the litter on a, on the farm because he just has the one eye. Was he born with that with the one eye? So the 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 person that we that my wife got him from said he got in a fight with a porcupine when he was a kid, oh. but, but the vet said that I just never developed. So. I, I think I believe the vet. Oh, the guy was kind of bullshitting the Yeah, he was bullshitting <laughs> about how the I was gone. He's like, oh, yeah, he was just in a fight. And the cool <laughs> thing is, is he's like, uh, he's always just been able to close his eye and leave it closed so it didn't have to get stitched up or anything. He oh, kinda, nice. Oh, he so looks that, like he's always blinking at you. It's kind of, He's a good guy. Oh, so that his, uh, yeah, his eyes, his eyes just closed. Yeah, always. Like a tiny little eye in there if you open it. It's a trip. Oh, wow. Is it like a cloudy and everything or, or not? No, it's tiny. You can't, it's like not even there. So it, the eyeball just never developed. It looks like more like a scar than an eye or something. Yeah. But yeah, I don't think it's really like he runs at a little bit of an angle and I think he puts his eye in the middle, but I mean, that's about <laughs> it. Did you ever have to put drops in it or anything? Did it need care? No, never needed care. But his other eye's a little cloudy and he got some drops in his like good eye, but uh Nothing major. He's been he's been a pretty good dog. When he was really young, we were taking photos for my parents and he got off the leash somehow and he ended up getting hit by a car. So we were always worried about his hips his whole life. But pretty, pretty good dog. You know, you, you have kids, right? Or, a, or... I have one, th I have one kid, three year old, my son, Camper. Yeah, they're buddies. They're definitely buddies. So your when the pandemic first hit, how your son was really young, like, I guess. Yeah. Around... So the way it kind of went was we released Allison was pregnant and we released sad fat luck either before that anyway the tour was at the very end of her mat leave so she was on uh maternity leave for you can get 16 months here yeah awesome so the last basically the last two months of her mat leave I went out and did that sad fat luck tour with Chesky and right when I got home, she basically went to work and I did started just doing the childcare and hanging with them. And then after that, the pandemic hit. So it was like just a no brainer. I just did the, the childcare and just been at home. It's kind of been, it's, it's been interesting. It's been cool. Yeah. I'm, so I'm wondering, are you concerned? Like when, if you do get back out on the road, will that be hard to be away from, from the little guy? It'll definitely be hard, but the, the, thing about his age is he'll start going to school yeah 
you know, if he's at school during the day and we got help to have him pick, you know, picked up and dropped off, I don't think it'll be as hard. Yeah. These, these years that the pandemic was, that would have been the hardest time to find the, the help. So obviously it's, it's hard, but, but, but you got to do it sometimes. I don't think I'm going to be taking any two month tours unless they right. were lucrative. I would be planning more for the 10 show, just different regions and areas. Yeah, sometimes I try to, I, when I'm talking to people who tour, I sometimes think like, oh, is that going to be hard? We're on the road about eight to nine months out of the year. And we have two kids, uh, but they've lived on the road. My wife and my kids have come on the road with, they've been since they were born and they're 13 and 15 now. So I always just wonder how that is for, for other people who do touring. I don't know why I put so much emphasis on it. Cause it's just a normal thing. Like people go to work, <laughs> people got to be away. I need some advice on that. Like I need to know the the swag, how you were able to make that happen. It was because it was what I wanted. I chose to get married. I chose to have kids. And for me, I was like, I made that choice. So uh, I'm going to, anything I do, you know, going through is going to be like, it includes them. So yeah, I got to make, you got to make it work. Exactly. Yeah. And I was a little selfish on me. I just didn't want to be away from the family and stuff, you know? So yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, you guys, let's go on the road. And we were doing well enough that my wife didn't have to like have a get, get a real job. So art, the art thing has been good enough for us where we can just travel all over whenever we want nice the kids are now getting to an age where <laughs> that's not as much fun for them anymore i don't think yeah, because I mean, they've got their own things going on all the time they don't want to miss that that's cool yeah it's it's awesome man i love it you know it's good for me because i'm a i tend to when i'm alone i make i do dumb shit like i'll like <laughs> it's only happened a couple of times that i've been on a show by myself but like i'll go out and get hammered you know and then i maybe don't wake up for the show like i'm just not good on my own so <laughs> having my family and kids around is an easy excuse for me like yeah i'm going back to the hotel and just going to call it a night and then i can get up early and get shit done <laughs> i like that swag though that's the swag that i want now i had i mean i had some late nights in in, in the in the career but uh but yeah i do you know the cool thing is i did out they camper and Allison flew and met flew with me to new york for the start of sad fat luck he got to come to sound check see the whole thing and then they also met in san francisco on the tour so it kind of broke it up but the full-on go everyone just rolling would be kind of dope it's uh, i like it i don't know it's, what do you think Adrian? well it's different <laughs> though too because we have to take all of his work we have to set it all up and um he needs assistance and so we're there to help with that for the, the times that he needs it. But then when they were little, I would find whatever children's museums or beaches or fun things and take them for the most of the day and do fun stuff or go back to the hotel. And then yeah, exactly. Um, so, but now that they're a little bit older, they don't want to do anything fun. <laughs> we showed them all the great stuff in life before they even hit 12 years old. <laughs> and now they're bored of it. <laughs> That is amazing because I'm getting reminded about all these dope things in cities you can do that isn't just partying, you know, um, yeah. and restaurants. It's like the museums and we would we would go to modern art museums on the road um, and check some stuff out, but not like I am now. I'm yeah, I'm getting up in the morning, like biking places doing. <laughs> I like I like it. You know, it yeah. was good. It was wholesome, wholesome pandemic. Yeah, you're adulting adulting yes <laughs> did you ever consider um like just going by the the name graham like g-r-a-m like it seems like a dope producer name a graham yeah well uh i i have had somebody say that to me you know when we were younger <laughs> like a gram that's just dope like a gram of dope man yeah. like, you know <laughs> I'm like well okay but but it is funny like the factor chandelier name i just needed the second name because i created you know my dj name when there wasn't a lot of hip-hop going on in our city and we were pretty young and just being influenced like being in the middle of Canada in Saskatchewan it's not you know it was a lot different then so I was just like going through all these names it seemed like you know just having the single like factor was 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 awesome but now I realize like with the internet that's just too generic so I had to add the chandelier onto it like the the two name yeah, I struggled with the name for a long time, but it, it like so. Look at this though. If my name was Graham, yeah, like even yeah. that that guy Dram, I think I don't know why he changed his name, but 
if you type Graham into Google, I'm not coming up too quick. Right. It have to be like Graham something or I don't know. It's annoying. To you, you know what? That makes sense to me. Yeah, I remember my my mom and dad, they they would start their their own business. My dad was a construction guy. But back when you, you know, there was a, I don't know what you guys had out there. We had the white pages and yellow pages. Was that a thing? Yeah, same. My mom would always name the business at last or something with an A at first. So it would be like the first one that shows up. Smart. Same thing with the internet now. Like you, if you're going to Google someone's name, like you got to, it's got to be a name that's not too, that just, yeah, that doesn't pop up. When I was interviewing uh, Illogic, I asked him if like Logic's name always pops up whenever someone. <laughs> that probably does, right? Like that probably is so annoying to him. <laughs> <laughs> what's your sound like i don't i'm not trying to be like a, a nerd elitist fucking music and shit but i'm just not great at like articulating verbally what things are but your sound is it's very specific i don't i can i can hear it do you have a way of like articulating what your sound is what makes it sound like it's your work um i think i it's taken me a lot of years to get to this point and you know just different sounds different collaborations with different you know session players or ideas that work or don't work or maybe i explore for a few years because i started off with very very heavy sampling like it was all sampling i would go to the local vinyl place i knew the owner pretty well and i would just sit at the record player all day and i would just get to check any record he would just let me go through them so i'd be there you know, at least three times a week in those days, at least when I had enough money and I would always spend my money on vinyl and I would never really like my hip hop vinyl collection is pretty OK, but I would always spend the money on samples or drum breaks or anything for my production. So then it got really because I started as a DJ, it started off very drum breaky, mm -hmm. but because I'm from Saskatchewan. A lot of the records that were out here or affordable or just kind of interesting and unique were folkish, psychedelic kind of different sounds. So then I instantly got into this realm that, that was guitar loops and weird synths and stuff I would be looping up. And then I had a few opportunities fall through because the samples couldn't get cleared. And then there was a long road to just starting production with my own sound and not really a lot of musical training. Um, so now all my stuff from, you know, for the last at least five years has been totally sample free, no samples. So it sounds like it came from, from your area that you're kind of, I think so. At least the recognizable stuff to, to have its own sound. Yeah, sure. I still bought like funk records and jazz and, you know, records. I knew I had drum breaks on or, or, you know, the classic hip hop samples and stuff like that. I was using lots of uh, like guitar pedals to run my keyboard through. I was trying to create, uh, you know, just a specific sound. And and I think that's one positive about my stuff is it is recognizable, but it, it fits in a weird realm. So it's sometimes like super hip hop stuff. It doesn't, you know, like some people don't like it, you know, and then sometimes it's not quite weird enough for the super avant-garde, like, so it's in a, it's in a weird realm, but I'm, I'm totally happy and comfortable with it. And I think it's evolving constantly. I've been working a ton um, since the pandemic on just, you know, my new, new kind of sound. <clears throat> That's like, I guess one of the, um, the silver lining to it is like for artists, for artists who are able to just kind of sit around and really kind of bang out some new ideas and work on stuff. Having that kind of time is nice to have. So I look forward to hearing what, what comes out of that. Yeah. And I didn't mean like a, uh, I mean, I'm sure you didn't think I meant it, but I didn't think like, oh, your stuff all sounds the same, but it definitely has, a, there's a yeah. vibe to it. Like it just, I don't know. I, I wouldn't be able to just close my eyes and someone play it every time. And I could go, oh yeah, that's one of the factors. And I couldn't do that, but you can definitely hear. Your yeah. I feel like having a style. And here's the other thing that I wanted to mention that I forgot about is this, the city was doing some work on uh, the pipes in front of our house and a pipe backed up and flooded my studio during the pandemic oh, shit. so all my stuff got wrecked and uh, i had to go through this whole insurance thing luckily the hard drives didn't get wrecked so i didn't lose any music but i got a whole new studio basically oh replaced uh during the pandemic so 
that album I did, East Lake, was kind of a, I'll never make music like that again. It was just such a weird, dark time coming off this flood, learning new equipment, trying to like develop a new sound from, and like having some new ideas of stuff to do from my first Storm album. So I kind of took those two albums and I've just continued working constantly. And I'm, I'm about half done a new record. I'm in no rush at all to finish it, but uh, a lot of hours have gone in to, to, uh, kind of exactly what you asked just trying to figure out what what I want to go for and like what kind of sound I want to have and 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 how serious the next releases are going to be like just because I've had so much time to think about them it's there's no excuses for you know throwing something together at this point yeah the one thing that I'm really concentrating on right now is this final Chesky record in the trilogy that he he we've been working on bring us the head and he is he's writing a bunch of new songs and I also have made a ton of new beats. So for this August oh, 9th man. studio session, it'll be the first session back in two years. And are you guys have time, a certain amount of time to get, he's only going to be there for a certain amount of time, or is it kind of just as long as it's going to take? It's going to be um, probably like a week this time and then reevaluate and then probably another session for the, for the finishing product. But I made a bunch of these new beats and he did like uh, some, you know, some demos, some ideas on them. And, and there's some real exciting stuff there. So Hell yeah. I'm looking forward to that. I'm so psyched because the last time we were actually in the studio and worked on new music at the same time, like me making beats ha or having new material he hasn't heard. I'm excited for him to hear was when we did sad fat luck, the majority of that album. So I feel like it's kind of a, you know, in some ways, not like like things aren't the same as when we were making that but but there is like an excitement behind getting back in the studio and hopefully we capture that on the on the record that's awesome what this is not even anywhere near what we we're just talking about but are you an eddie murphy fan eddie murphy yeah yeah like he, he's hilarious right i was gonna say what, what's the best eddie murphy movie probably like i used to like raw you know yeah. when, when i was when i was younger i i haven't watched it in a long time and <laughs> and you know i at, at that time when when i when i saw that it was you know it was a friend's older brothers that had it and and i'd never really seen anything like that or i wasn't even very up on stand-up comedy at the time either oh yeah that's a great introduction to stand-up comedy <laughs> yeah that was, that was really so I guess you're saying that it's not the movie with the ghosts, uh, Haunted Mansion. Probably not Haunted Mansion, <laughs> but I did like Nutty Professor when it came out. You know, that was, that was pretty funny. I don't know if that would really stand up, though. <laughs> I don't know what my thoughts on are that on that today. But speaking of the ghosts and Haunted Mansions, Ghost Dog or Ghostbusters? Ooh, that's. Ghost Dog. Awesome. You're a Wu Tang fan. I mean, like that's weird to even ask anybody that, but yeah, and that that was my biggest influence when I heard those those beats. That's what got me into buying records and getting cool little quirky loops and you know things that were were quirky. They didn't match up necessarily perfect, but it was perfect. You know, um, the RZA he he's he's a magician. That guy, he's one of my favorite all time producers. And just, yeah, yeah. The, what you know, Ghostbusters is funny and all that, but sure. Ghost Dog for sure. Yeah, I was just going to say for anyone out there that doesn't know, Riza did the soundtrack for uh, Ghost Dog. I love that movie. There's a well, bee in my house right now. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> I think he even produced it. So Jim Jarmusch was the director of it, but yeah, I, it's possible that he did. It wasn't Forrest Whitaker. Yeah, it was. It was Forrest, oh, Forrest Whitaker was Ghost Dog. Wasn't one of the Wu-Tang guys in the movie also? I'm not off the top of my head. I'm sh maybe like as a cameo, but but maybe someone was up, uh, was in there. 
I, I did. I did have a beehive outside of my house, and Just now? I didn't. Well, it was in between the crack of the cement in my house, so I like tried to like get them all out. And I thought I did, but then one was just in my basement. So is there a hole in the foundation of my house and the bee is getting through or is this no. random? Yeah. Anyway, have you ever heard that, you know, they're not murder all of a sudden, right? all of a sudden people hear something in their wall and then they break in there and there's a hole behind in there. No, have you ever seen those stories. That's awful. <laughs> This is put, not good news put, right now. Put your ear up against your uh, <laughs> yeah, wall. Your house is humming. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> this might be this might be a, a lot larger undertaking than a honeybee or a wasp. Honeybee, because that's what I don't want to like. You know, I don't want to be be mean to the bees. No. no, yeah, they ain't gonna bother you. Wait, Agent, that story you just said is that usually. Were those honeybees or were they horned? Yeah, honeybees, oh. but it seems like they were able they're able to move them they're, uh, without, you know, yeah. killing them all. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do some serious investigation after this interview. Put here. the take the plastic <laughs> cup, hold it up against the wall. Yes. <laughs> Are you a Roddy Rowdy Piper fan? For a wrestler? Yeah. You know, to some extent. He's from your hometown. Did you know that? Roddy Rowdy Piper. I thought the uh, the original Undertaker was from here. Well, he might be. I, I but I do know that uh, that is Roddy he? Piper is. Yeah, <laughs> he had the fresh kilt. Yeah, you know, you... actually, that would that would that would be a dope uh, font to bite for something. That that, yeah. he, that he had a he had a he had a hard font. <laughs> that or the font from they live did you ever see that movie no i didn't see that one yeah he was the, the star in that movie and you put on glasses and you could see the aliens so humans there were humans that were existing amongst us and they were aliens and the only way to see them is if you put on these these special glasses but yeah that was uh roddy piper's hey. starring role <laughs> um, I, I, I was into wrestling though in the in the late 80s or were late, you early 90s yeah that, I, I, I thought it was i mean i think everyone kind of was yeah absolutely have you been to a wrestling match since no. did you ever go to one i did i haven't been to one i saw open mike eagle did a wrestling match that's great that you say that here's a sophie's choice for you killer mike or open mike open mike <laughs> gotta shout him out yeah i've been trying to get him on we've been we've been messaging back and forth and he was just so busy with this oh story. yeah he's great he's great but he's got a lot going on for sure i did a tour with him a long time ago him and mocha only he's a good he's a great guy was a wall one on that tour with you guys too or? chesky 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 was yeah oh how about crush or chemist mm, chemist well what about this one then for your area Hoodie or bunny hug? Bunny hug. I got to do it. <laughs> what, what is this? That's what they call hoodies out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> toques, toques for like a beanie, toque and a bunny hug. <laughs> that's this, that's the Saskatchewan it. slang for real. How does this bunny hug? How did this come about? I love that. That's a great <laughs> the bunny hug. <laughs> Honestly, I wish I knew more about the history of it. I never thought about what the origin story of the bunny hug is. I imagine because hoodies are so cozy. And just, it's like, it's like a bunny on you. Like a bunny like, hugging you. Yeah. <laughs> what well, that you should be my new move out the gate. Yeah, right? should. What, do you, what, are, what did you say? The, what do you call the hoodies? I mean, not the hoodies, the, the, the toque. beanies. Toque. 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 Yeah. Toque. Toque. Toque and bunny hug. That's like Tango and Cash. That's like some sort of buddy cop movie or something. Toque and bunny hug. <laughs> toque and bunny hug. <laughs> How do you feel toque. about living in the, in the Paris of prairies? I mean, is that, that's your home? Yeah, I mean, Paris of the Prairies. Um, it, it, it's, it's pretty amazing here because the cost of living isn't great. Isn't crazy. And we live in a beautiful city and it has a rich, you know, art community and, awesome. you know, we don't get all the big concerts necessarily hitting us. A lot of them just do Vancouver when they're on the West coast and do Toronto and, and we get left out of that. But, I think it's made our music scene and art scene just kind of quirky and different. And if, if you are able to get someone out here, you know, we get all kinds of random touring acts because it's not all about being, you know, huge 
like we're not getting a j cole concert but ac alone is coming here yeah or, yeah you awesome. know yeah i don't know any other comparisons right now but <laughs> well yeah. uh, is there do you guys have a band out of there that is there's someone coming out of there that we should definitely check out let me just think right now there's lots of there's lots of up and coming bands i'm really excited to hear what what people what people have been getting into once the performances start again right i work with uh, a guy his name's logs he, he's an up-and-coming rapper from here he did a video he, we did a collaboration kind of project from like a saskatoon centric but it was a pandemic thing um dex riley is a guy that's he's young he's coming out just trying to think of something band wise that might be we're originally from um salt lake city like we have a home there that's home for us but the underground hip-hop is real huge in salt lake city because we just have an appreciation for stuff because i mean i'm trying to think of a venue that we i rocked there with mocha and open mike and chesky we used to go through there there was a record store guy that would bring us you know i don't have the best relationship though with utah we got pulled over once there oh, and there was some weed in the car and it was just like it was a very very brutal time and i had to do all this bullshit and like call the court and send piss tests and all this bullshit it stressed me out so much because i was just starting to get tours and do things in the states i was like thinking I wouldn't be able to go back. It was just silly, but you know, now that it's legal in Canada anyway, it's it's just so much less stress for no reason. And it's legal <laughs> everywhere in Canada, right? They just wipe it across the board. Yeah. 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 So you can fly with it. I I still haven't done it because it trips me <laughs> out too much, but you can bring it on the plane and everything. Wow. It's just awesome. Yeah, that I, I'm bummed to hear that that was a I'm talking about uh, getting pulled over in Utah, but because that doesn't go away. Like when you have a bad experience in a city or something, no matter what, like it just doesn't go away. That feeling because I'm an advocate for for Salt Lake City. I, I've, I've always loved it there. But yeah, I can't I can't like make excuses for shit well, like that because it happened a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, in, it, it's insane that that the penalties for weed and even just things like people still in jail for marijuana is insane. No, that I is mean. a joke. Did they let joke. him out of jail in Canada? You probably have to file some paperwork or something to. Yeah. I think you fill something out and you can get out. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know what the, like, I don't know if there's a certain amount or if it was selling or what it is exactly. I never really looked into that. I hope that they get that figured out. I mean, it seems like we could be reaching legalization in the states but you never know um seems to be going good here though yeah. like there's nothing crazy happening just yeah because everyone it was obvious i mean what crazy could happen yeah exactly like nothing <laughs> bad has happened from this just the government's making more money that's now. right <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah that's what they got to just keep saying to be legal in the states you got to just keep reminding people how much money <laughs> yeah, all, already rich guy you can make more money yeah, buddy. that's right so go start whatever you're calling it what do you call it when you go work try to get the government to uh, do lobby lobby yeah oh yeah lobby <laughs> a lobby that was pot guys no I know. What, what do you call someone from from saskatoon what is is it saskatoonian what saskatonian uh tunian probably saskatoonian well is the is the regina and, and saskatoon feud is that real it's real and it's Regina. That's oh, is it? Oh, see, it. Yeah. I just, what is? Because every American says Regina, not every. That's the. Is that it's the capital? The no. It's the, yeah. The, so it's a city, the exact same size, basically as Saskatoon, and it is the capital. It's called the Queen City. But yeah, there's like, I mean, it's it's not a real feud, but there, there's a there's it's a. Funny. What's it based on, though? Is it just because it's just a, like they're the capital and Saskatoon's better? You know, yeah. it's that. <laughs> so, <I> think, yeah. <laughs> so is the feud real? So it's not. There's no love like St. Paul and, and and Minneapolis. They have love for each other. Yeah, they're a little more love, I think. Yeah. Yeah. The, well, what do they, what do they call their twin cities? Right. Yeah. The twin cities. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the wisdom teeth was used in the, that Oakley commercial. It makes you feel immortal and exposes every weakness. It's 
thing can fucking hurt. That's yes. that's awesome, man. Was that something they reached out to you for, or how did that? How does something like that happen? So I work with this company that does. Well, I work with a couple different companies that do like sync license stuff. So they set it up, and I just got. I you know you get the email. Hey, do you want to do something? Uh, this is the this is the payment. This is this is who it's for. Give me the green light, you know. And I was like, okay, cool. And then and then when I saw it, it was like ten times doper than I imagined. So I I was really pumped to yeah, it's awesome to be part of that. You know, they the 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 ad looks cool and and have an action Bronson talk do the do the vocals. Yeah, that's cool. Cool to, to hear too, you know. Action Bronson does the vo- the voiceover for it, and yeah, it's 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 pretty awesome. You follow him on Instagram or anything? I don't have him on uh, Instagram, but I did see he's losing weight. He's lost like four million pounds. It's crazy. <laughs> but he's like doing all kinds of like boxing and showing his his weightlifting and stuff. That's great to yeah, see. Yeah, he's working out real hard. Cause did I, he, I like did he have a kid and, and he was like, you got to be around for your kid or what was the situation? I'm not sure what happened there, but I, that sounds about right. I mean, the size he was getting to that's, you know, that's dangerous material. You know, when you get that big, you start heart attacks, start playing in. And when you have kids, like you want to be able to stick around. So I, that sounds familiar to me. I would imagine that that would be the case though. Yeah. Cause everything just, yeah. If you get, if you get to that size, all your joints, your back, just everything, you know? It's harder though. It's harder. I mean, that's why I, I love seeing someone being able to do that. Um, it's inspiring. It's inspiring. It, it takes a lot of dedication. It certainly does. How did you end up hooking up with Fake Four and Chesky? And how did how did that initially happen? I knew about Chesky through just lots of mutual friends, and I had heard his because I had, I initially started the, my initial success in the U.S. was with A Wall for this single we did called Try we did the seven inch and it did cool. And, and then we got signed to cornerstone RAS, which is a label that put us on to do a record. And then we got that tour that I mentioned earlier, how I met Hoppa and, and through all that stuff, I met a lot of the shape shifters and a lot of the affiliates of the shape shifters and Chesky was around the same age as me kind of get getting in with those guys as well. And, and then, we just met through that and in 2008 we ended up doing a collaboration which is a song called pray but i'm convinced that our faces are sweating up and so a swirling liquid taffy bubbling below as we're and that was for my album called chandelier and you know he did it and he was telling me he's starting a record label but it was mostly just uh family and and things like that i was like oh no no it's all good Uh, i just want to do a collab with you i loved your you know your last record and he did the track and i mean i sent him the song back as well as i was like yeah check out the whole album and he called me back a few hours later and was just like i'd love to put this out on fake four as the second release after my brother's album and i was like whoa we just clicked you know and and we toured a ton together he hooked me up with doing the record with micah you know i, I got to do another record with a wall we all got to tour together and and i mean it's years later that was 2008 i mean it's over 10 years we've been working together yeah i loved it i love like the because of that just the fantastic music that has come from that yeah just some of those you know you meet some of those people and we've all kind of stuck stuck together as buddies and and kirby kirby dominant is is another one too that i did i do paranoid castle with and he's on fake four as well and yeah you know you when you have a lot of time to think like we all just had i'm very glad it was doing a lot of this music stuff with my friends you know and creating memories that that we can you know, build on, continue to, to be friends. It wasn't just like a business opportunity that yeah. was the best case scenario financially. It just continues for people that you don't even know when they're listening to the music that came out of that. Like they become, I don't know. I I, I don't know where I was headed with that. I don't know. <laughs> That's why I love genuine stuff. You know, it's from the heart. I hope, I hope that comes across, you know? Oh, it absolutely does. Anything out of even just the fake four label. I don't know. Everything is just 
feels very truthful, very real. There's no phoniness there. It's all the music's all great, no matter what kind of music it is. That's Chesky's ear. He he curates that whole label. I mean, he'll be showing me all kinds of bands, and he's I think it's signing about signing them. And you know, he really he he's the driving force, obviously, behind all that stuff. And and I think he has a real knack for recognizing and hearing potential in people you know and 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 hearing people that are you know actually striving for their goals and 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 making you know and have some talent yeah i think uh, one of the other big things is just a really good dude like (laughs) yeah Yeah, that helps a ton i mean across the board anything you do if, if you're dealing with people that are like good guy you know people good humans yeah it's a it's yeah. a win win in the industry you meet a lot of shady people though there's a lot of uh there's a lot of fly by night kind of people that aren't i'm i'm sure in 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 your your industry as well yeah a lot of big talkers you know and 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 it's just it's so refreshing not to not to deal with people like that on on t- too often of a basis i know it's never going to be you know it can nothing can ever be too perfect especially especially when you do it as work um, yeah there's always going to be situations that aren't ideal but one of the downsides of that is when you're first starting out you're not really able in a position to be able to choose who you're going to be working with or whatever but once you oh, start yeah. getting a little more successful then you can start picking and choosing and curating the perfect people that you get to be around and work with When you can be with the like-minded people, you know, you know, and a lot of these people, even if they're working on other collaborations with other producers or other bands or whatever, they're making great music. So it's been years of interesting, interesting ride. That's for sure. Where's your main focus at right now? So I was kind of focused on getting a uh, getting kind of a start on a new solo record that I could really really take my time with and I think I have that start I have the direction I have the sound so then when I make something that fits the sound I put it there which is kind of what I need to stay motivated to make new stuff so other by doing that I've stockpiled a bunch of beats that I don't know where they're going but they could potentially be for my record full knowing that Chesky's coming on the ninth and he's going to get to peruse through whatever kind of we start feeling for that. Cause ultimately that's, you know, but that's the focus is, is the, it going to be fresh. Thing. Like when he gets, has he heard any of it? Have you shared any of it with him or is it going to be one of those situations where like shows up and you guys just bang through him? He hears them. I've probably shown him 20 beats over the pandemic. And I think we have about six or eight ideas and then i have probably 10 beats he hasn't heard that i'm excited to play and then awesome. whatever i make until the ninth which will probably be two or three beats that's awesome yeah so i'm looking forward to it you know i don't want to be too over prepared you don't want too sure. much stuff and and i do want to make stuff when he gets here in the studio that's always my favorite yeah that's what i was going to ask so you will um just come up something fresh while you're both sitting there Oh yeah. That's my favorite. That's why that's a big part of why when you approached me with this concept, I was so excited about, cause this is my favorite thing is, is getting together and doing it on the spot. Yeah. At which, and it's coming out so good right now, but look at that handsome dog right there. <laughs> I wanted to make him a full on pirate and oh he, yeah, I mean, he's pirate. <laughs> I got, these are going to be all tentacles and stuff. Um, that timer went off, but I don't, if you don't mind, maybe we can go on for another like five, five or 10 minutes or something. If sure, that's good with me. Um, yeah. I, obviously I won't be able to completely finish this, but that's usually the case. I like to get at least a good amount of it done and then I'll, I'll give, um, add way more details. And before I send it out to you, I'll have it, uh, totally amazing. Um, I'm hype on it. Well, let me ask you this one. How about, um, bowling or bike ride? Bike ride. I like my pedal biking. What do you, do you guys ride in the winter out there? You can, um, I did one, one winter. You got to buy special tires with studs, obviously, but, uh, you have diehards that will do that, right? Like, doesn't matter. Yeah. And I'm, I, I don't know. I'm not diehard enough. And we live very central. Um, where, where my house is, is you can walk anywhere pretty much. So, okay. Do you have any weird phobias? Like I, my, I mean, weird, like my cousin is like, he's crazy scared of buttons interesting 
So all his clothes are zippers. Like he's like buttons on clothes. Yeah, or- he cannot he cannot wear um anything that has a button on it. So all his like it has to be zippers. <laughs> So he wouldn't like this picture right here. <laughs> no, no. That's what I was thinking of like these buttons on there. He would not be into that at all. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think I have any phobias like that. I don't like onions, and I'm a vegetarian, so that's kind of a weird one. So Chesky and those guys always bug me because every order is like, oh, and no onions, you know, <laughs> like, no onions. They always make fun of me. But is it just the taste, or that bothers you, or? It's especially the raw onions. I just can't get down with like on a burger or pizza or an omelet or something. I just, it just ruins it for me, but. So a sauteed onion, like in a soup or something. That's good. That's fine fine with me. But those raw onions, oh, they just ruin it. (laughs) And so that's my thing. I mean, I used to be, for a time, I got quite a bit of anxiety when with flying. So the whole border crossing without a visa and the flying, I was pretty anxious about. And you're good with flying now? Yeah, I'm fine with it now, especially since like I always used to be so worried about having a roach in my pocket or something <laughs> oh, stupid, geez. you know, like I yeah. overthought everything. And now like, no, I don't care. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm responsible enough and I, I always was, I don't know. I used to stress over weird things with traveling, but. Are you an anxious type? Not really. No, that's what's so weird about it. Oh, I'm pretty you. chill. I'm pretty like even with, uh, with the emotions, well, but s- since having a child that's changed, definitely a lot more emotional or just emotions happening in the household at yeah. all times. Like, so up, so down. So, you know, are you a helicopter kind of parent or are you maybe a little bit helicopter? Oh. I, I, yeah, probably a little bit. I didn't want to be, but I totally was. And I did. Were you? Oh, yeah, I don't want to be either, but I kind of know. <laughs> was am. I am. I am. <laughs> I, yeah. You know what? I love when you could get both sides right now. <laughs> you know, one of the things, like for me, like I'm only alive just because, like, I just got lucky way too many times throughout uh, my whole life. That, though. And so, like, I was just, I just know all of the shit that can go wrong. And so that's why all my helicopter parenting came from that. I was like, you can't do that. You know, like, even fun shit. Like, you can't climb a tree because you can, you'll fall out and break your <laughs> Good break. And, and it happened. My son fell out of tree and crushed his head open. Like, I, I don't oh. know. Those things can, I always think maybe, like, it doesn't happen all the time. But for some reason, our luck, it'll happen to us. That's how I always felt. <laughs> yeah. And when it, whenever anything's going good, I'm like, oh, something bad's going to happen. Yeah. Things are going too good right now. I am 100% that way. What an awful feeling. Where do you think that comes from? I don't know. I know because it sucks. Like, really. Yeah, it does. It sucks. You're like, because at a certain level, the helicopter is good to be there, but you don't want to be distracting or take away from a kid's experience. And it will. <laughs> we took away from a lot of their they need to learn on their own you can only learn by making mistakes and picking yourself back that's up. right yeah it's so true it's tough so though. i'm right i'm right there really analyzing it i i try to evaluate the risk you know like what you know like you said what's the worst that could happen here is this you know is this a good scenario it's like if they fall off that dock i can easily jump in it's not a big deal right <laughs> yeah i don't know so i'm right there i'm right there i'm I, that's in my mind mind the at this time for sure <laughs> after you die would you would you want to attend your funeral like from no no you, i don't you, think you, so wow. <laughs> you don't want to sit around and hear everybody uh, pine over you <laughs> i don't know if I, I just i don't think so i think i think when the I don't have yeah, like, like I would be I would be able to watch it like it was uh, like yeah. a motion picture or whatever. Oh, yeah. I don't know about that. No, I don't. Want that. <laughs> yeah, because I, I have I've thought about it on several occasions and I don't know what my answer is on that. Sometimes I like, oh, I kind of want to see how it goes down. But <laughs> and then you get like your soul, like your ghost can just be everywhere. So you see all the you side all conversations of <laughs> people's houses that they like see how they actually feel. You know, it's funny that I say that because I'm not big into like if I'm overhearing a conversation and I know someone's just about ready to like talk shit or say something like I'll hurry up and interrupt them because I don't want to hear someone say I'm something saying. that I didn't want to hear. <laughs> I don't. I Yeah, I don't know if that's age or what it is, but I, I'm I'm pretty similar 
so, you know sometimes you know we, we you know we bag on uh, uh, homies you know you, you riff on each other and kind of yeah. joke around when it gets a little too too real sometimes i step out too or I, that's when i hit the bathroom or maybe like go talk with someone else like yeah. i don't really like getting into it too hard either definitely conflict averse like try to avoid as much unless it's needed but i mean a lot of the shit talking isn't needed it's just some bullshit yeah unless it's like a intervention or something <laughs> yeah and i mean so, sometimes i've even thought about that like in an intervention situation i don't know if i'm really the best example to be uh, having this intervention like yeah. i don't think i've ever had have you ever had to partake in an intervention no yeah. not a formal one i don't really know if an intervention is the greatest thing i know i know they have worked for certain yeah, it's, I, I all these kind of good. things are so hard because everyone's everyone's so different and every scenario is so different because I yeah. feel like interventions can do a lot of harm sometimes, but sometimes maybe they work. So, yeah, I don't know. That's not my not my bag at all. No. I was <laughs> like, I'll just keep to my own business. I don't. <laughs> but then you do you you know if someone's going down hard, like you kind of want to do something, but I don't know what the answer is to that. Yeah, and you gotta you gotta trust and want your homies to be able to talk to you too, and. Hopefully they'll be able to bring it up, especially if you're giving them the opportunity or sometimes, you know, if you feel like someone's struggling, it's as easy as just going out for just a random, it doesn't even have to be a beer, like just, just come, just make an excuse to hang out. And then usually you give them the opportunity. If they want to say something, they could say something, you know, right. not that. So that one's less, less of a intervention, more of like just being a good homie. Yes. Be a good homie. Just, yeah out of the pandemic some people are probably going to need a good homie so i think it's important yeah for sure speaking of homies what about beastie boys or ghetto boys <laughs> Ooh, the amount of because beastie boys i would say ghetto boys for me oh, especially awesome. especially amount of listening hours I think in my life, I've listened to more Ghetto Boys than Beastie wow, Boys. Wow, that's good to hear. Awesome. And, and it's it's interesting because I think just the age that I was at and the age I got into super underground things, I didn't really experience the Beastie Boys fully. Yeah. Like I wasn't the, exactly. I wasn't the right obviously i've gone back and checked everything and when i was really into djing they had mix master mike as their as their dj which was you know and that intergalactic you know i was djing yeah. and dropping that song all the time at the clubs and stuff like that but yeah that makes yeah, ghetto boys i mean that's i i listened to the, those records a ton and and i and i owned you know so i i gotta say ghetto boys yeah it's like um older groups like that it's definitely comes from what you experience mine mine would be beast boys i love them both but i was i was i think like in fifth fourth or fifth grade when bc boys came out and i was i would have my ghetto blaster on my shoulders and i carried cardboard and like i was break dancing to be like i was just i was so into them but yeah it goes the same with like tv shows like what you grew up with what tv shows were on that's yeah exactly because some of the older homies have different ones than yeah. you you know or whatever well, I have that feeling with Wu-Tang Clan. Like, I really do. I love Wu-Tang, but I was already outside of high school when Wu-Tang came out. So like that angst, I didn't have that. Like mine was NWA. My Wu-Tang was NWA. Yeah, yeah. Like, that so, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. I've always thought about that. I think a lot of um, teenage angst, like the music that you hear when you when you have that teenage angst is the music that's going to like cure. Oh, yeah. It sticks with you forever, too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, if, if money was no option or it wasn't an issue, what, what would be the first thing that you would buy? Um, it would have to be, you know, it would have to be a second place somewhere warm. I would just buy some property probably in, I don't know, the flights from, if I was still going to live in Saskatoon, probably somewhere in Mexico, um, real nice place with a pool, just, you know, that'd probably be yeah. what I'd buy. You, you're born and raised in Saskatoon? Yeah. Yeah. Lived here my whole life. Well, I know I'm not going to be able to finish this drawing, so I will finish it for you later. Before I close this out, I like to finish wrap up with a really big question, the philosophicals. Okay. Here's, the, here's the big question. Are we in the matrix? No. 
<laughs> yeah, good. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> you know, I, I, I can see, uh, yeah, I can see it, but I don't think we are. What can we promote? Where do you prefer people to uh, purchase your music? All those sort of things. Let's, let's uh, make the time to do that right here. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say if everybody could just follow my thing on Spotify, I know it doesn't have a ton of, you know, monetary gain for me, but that's somewhere where something, at least the artist at my level, that's where the newest releases are always coming out. When someone starts hearing your music on Spotify and stuff, they get access to, you know, your, your catalog. The hope is like, then they'll, then they'll become big enough fans that they'll go and start spending the money with your with you right i mean that's that's the the hope right there go to my after you like it you know you click on my Bandcamp link maybe i start teasing some new singles in my little thing it's like merch available maybe they buy the the merch pack i'm gonna do some cool some some real cool merch for this uh my new my new record that's it i'm already starting now so it's it takes a while to make and uh it's going to be cool and i know chesky's got a lot of good plans for for his third record you know there's lots of stuff there's lots of stuff in the works uh right now i would say just stay up on my on my instagram and my spotify are, are my two you know but i'm factor chandelier i'm on every social media pretty much where's the most updated where you feel like you're you're pretty good about it keep keeping it updated as far as social media goes probably instagram okay. then twitter then facebook and that's all i have okay <laughs> where do you buy the merch so my band camp is probably the best thing to promote i guess now thinking yeah. about it rethinking about it i love merch availability i know it costs money to make it so but i mean i listen to most of my music on spotify it's where i discover all my new artists but i go back and i'll i buy vinyl and i buy merch from the artists that i love so um, but there's no way I'll ever find them if I didn't have Spotify these days. You know, it's like kind of. Yeah, because you want to kind of check the direction, too, because you only have so much money. And I get yeah. that. Like, you know, some artists, you don't buy every single record. Some artists you do. So that's, you know, hopefully you get enough fans. I'm, I'm you know, I got to shout out all my fans. I, I, I have awesome fans that really support the pre-orders. You know, I'm not like a massively huge artist by any means, but. You know, I have a strong following of people that have supported my music for years. And I think right now there's tons of new fans and they don't even realize I have a bunch of old albums. Right. The, but the, that's cool. That's how you pick up all the new. Like the one th- good thing about continuously creating is there will always be new people. Yes, exactly. So we'll see. I'm, I'm interested, you know, getting back to this show that I'm about to do my first show. I'm excited to see who from the city or who's been listening to my music. If there's younger kids there, uh, you know, we'll see. And I keep up on current music, but in no way do I try to, I, you know, it it, kind of looks pathetic if you try to just hop on everything that's hot. Nobody wants to hear everything, you know, changing your style is great, but just doing whatever everyone else is doing is not. Yeah. Changing it to be so that you're relevant at the time. It's a little weird. (laughs) And it will, and that makes you irrelevant. I think. (laughs) What are you currently listening to? Some of the new stuff that you're currently listening to. Come of the new, well, I like that new open mic record. I like, um, you know, I've gone through a real Neil Young phase lately. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I've been listening to Neil Young and Curtis Mayfield constantly these days. Oh, awesome. Is there a rapper out there that you could possibly get to lay verse on your on one of your songs that you would like to do you think you'd end up making a banger with? Somebody that would be unrealistic would be like Kid Cudi is somebody I always stay up on his releases. Um, the sound he always uses sounds that really, really hit right in my ear. You know, I, I'm working on a new one with Micah right now. We're doing a new single. And the beat is a little more up tempo and it's kind of, it, it's kind of swaggy. I can't wait to see what he, what he comes up with for that. I always, I always get excited for a new Mike and nine collab. You know, I was just thinking about some of the guys that you've had on the show that I, I noticed like me and Chesky and Sage Francis did that song. I'd 
love to do a solo song with him, just me and him. You know, uh, Soul has hit me up. We haven't worked together in like 10 years. It would be cool to do a new one with him. See what I have more. I have more excitement about doing something like that with people yeah. that I know rather than being like their manager being like, hey, you know, drop that five grand in this number. Here's right. the Swift right. account. You know, once it's in email the beat or whatever yeah. it works. I don't know. Yeah, that's but. what that's what Hoppe was saying yesterday. Just like he's having the most fun kind of working with people that he works with friends and friends of friends where it's not paying for someone to come in. It's more of like, yeah, oh. it's, it's like a connection. It's it, it, it'll it'd be like. You could, if you wanted to talk about maybe adding something to the song horns or get uh, an additional singer on the course, you actually can have a conversation and figure out whether it's better or worse. Yeah. When you have to go through somebody like, if it's a certain amount of money, they're dropping their 16 and they don't care. They don't ever want to hear the song again. They did it for the money, which is fine. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not opposed to that either, but. I can see why Hoppe feels the same way because once you've been doing music for a long time, that doesn't necessarily feel that great to, cause it's not as much of a collaboration then it's, yeah, and it's you just want to enjoy it. on someone's name, which is, yeah. which can work though. It can work for the right artist at the right time. Well, as you start getting a little older, you start realizing like, I want to do things that I enjoy doing. You know what I would like to do? I've worked with all these guys before and I had this thought in the pandemic and I'm going to put it out in the world right now. Cause maybe it'll happen. I want to do a song that I produce that's haiku d'etat. AC Alone, Abrude, and Mike and Nine on the same song. How great that would that be, be! That would be a very, very great thing if that could happen. Yeah. So. Well, it's out there in the ether now. Yeah. I mean, exactly. Currently, I need a little rambling to get there, but that's my answer. <laughs> currently, it's only in our us us three, but uh, once we air the episode, it's it's definitely out there in the ether. <laughs> yeah. Well. And what's well, up to those guys? Maximum respect. Those are some of the some of the best rappers to ever do it. Yeah, my- that'd be so dope. I, I'm, I think that's going to happen at some point. Now that it's out there, the, the, the initial step is putting it out there in the world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, it was it was like a it was a real pleasure talking with you. The the whole th- way it went down. It's the first time someone kind of logged on earlier and they, and was like, "Hey, I I'm open pretty much whenever we can go." This is exactly what I like. Like how I like the show to be more of you know we're just shooting the shit and enjoying it it's never um uh, geared towards any certain place it's just let's just get together and have a chat i like talking with people who are um creatives and people whose work i respect and i certainly respect your whole catalog i i've been shuffling my spotify with every single track that you're a part of anything that you produce and i just, i'm telling you every song is great and there's no bullshit i am not i'm not kissing ass or anything it is every song is fantastic i don't skip over one of them so um I, it's been an honor talking with you um i will get this drawing finished up uh probably uh maybe by I the end it. of the day or something and i'll send you the original i would love that and you know since you hit me up i've been checking out the show you guys are you know you guys work on and and the drawings it's it's awesome it, maximum you. respect to you guys too thank you um my wife's never been to canada so um Got to come in the summer, though. Come in the summer. You know, I always want to, but when we are traveling, like when we're in the Detroit area or uh, Seattle area, and it's just right there. Yeah. We have a van full of inventory. And I'm like, they're never going. We can't. Yeah, yeah. back to full circle to the border situation. (laughs) Unless we rent a car. That's what we'll have to do. Yeah, lock it up real good somewhere and rent a car and pop over for the weekend or something. Yeah. Yeah, because they'll want to. I mean, the van is full. Like, they'll want (laughs) to. Like, no, I'm just going for a couple days. (laughs) I'm not going to sell any of this stuff. Don't worry. (laughs) Yeah, they ain't believing that for a heartbeat. No. But um, well, I think what I was just well, I was I was looking over um Saskatoon. I was just looking it over, and it looks like the kind of place that I think my wife would really like. It's like it's uh, yeah, it's gonna be a place that we're gonna end up checking out. So yeah, you got to check it out, and it's it's got lots of cool things in the summer, and you know there's some there's some hip hop stuff. So anytime you're thinking, you know, give give me a give me a give me a holler, and I'll let you know what's going on. That's for sure. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks again for joining us, man. It's uh, well, it, thanks for having me. And I'm gonna go make a beat right now. It's word, <laughs> awesome. It, 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 day, daycare free, so I'm on. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks again very much. Have a good rest of your day today. You Bye. guys. Too. All right. Cheers. cheers. Oh 
yes. Oh, yes. Factor Chandelier. Thank you again for joining me uh, on today's episode of DOD 45. I'm eagerly awaiting that album that you and Chesky are working on. And you can bet I will be doing everything in my power to catching your show when you make it back over here to the States. Hopefully that will be without any border complications. For the rest of y'all, do yourself a real favor and head over to factorchandelier.bandcamp.com to check out his music and merch and visit his Spotify. He don't mind that and give him a listen there. And to keep up with him more personally, hit him up on Instagram at factorchandelier. If you'd like to learn more about me and my art, head over to artbytai.com. That's art by T-A-I. And if there was ever a time to avoid following me on Twitter at Art by Ty, that time would be now because there's absolutely nothing going on over there for me. <laughs> That's it for now. Thanks for joining us on DOD 45. As always, you can find all the necessary links in the description boxes. Take care. Cheers. Bad thoughts in my head that take place in my bed And I don't have to lie, but I do that instead Things that need to be said poison in my brain like that Thanks for watching this episode of DOD 45. I hope that you enjoyed yourself. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to ever miss an episode. Also stick around my YouTube page for a bit. There's a whole array of videos to enjoy, including time-lapse videos, drawing tutorials, and live streams. It's like an amusement park. Now click that subscribe button and go watch another episode of DOD 45. Cheers.